Good morning, everyone. This is a code enforcement hearing for the city of North Miami. Today is April the 17th, 2019. I'm Christopher Benjamin, special magistrate for the city of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of this city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I'll dismiss the case and you'll be free to go. These proceedings are being recorded, therefore all persons who are testifying or speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording devices. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when your case is called and, I, and we have some interpreters who will assist you during your proceedings. When your case is called, the property owner or agent for the property owner or any witnesses that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room when asked split please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you're not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you're gonna need a power of attorney in order to speak on behalf of the property owner. The city will present its case first and the property owner will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I'm gonna issue a finding of fact on the case. If I find that a violation of the city code exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I'm going to impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement at this time, then your case will be reset or tabled uh, to a date in the near future. If you don't agree with my findings of fact, then the property owner may appeal my order to the uh, circuit court here in Miami-Dade County, which would be the 11th Judicial Circuit, and you have 30 days by which to do so. In accordance with the Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decisions made by this special magistrate with respect to any matter that's considered at these hearings, then you're gonna need a record of these proceedings, a verbatim record of these proceedings. This record includes the testimony evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost for obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant, meaning the person who is appealing, and it is recommended that the persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporters at these proceedings for expedience issues. Now pursuant to city code, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before this special magistrate, then the city shall be entitled to recover costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment is $100 per case. Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien on the property, then the city will charge an additional administrative fee in order to record the release of that lien. Now, if you're gonna be giving testimony here today, please rise and raise your right hands to be sworn and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Translators, good afternoon. Translators, Spanish, Spanish translators, you Madam Clerk, go ahead and uh, cite any additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda, then call your first client. Item number six, FYBRR 2018-00031 is postponed six months. Item number seven, SYB, FYBRR 2018-00055 is complied. Item 24, RCCOR 2017-00004 is postponed to June. 
Item 34, CEEXC 2019-00005 is postponed one month. Item 52, CESTA 2019-00003 is postponed to May. Item 53, PDFAO 2018-00078 is off calendar. Item 59, MHVIO 2018-01167 is complied. Item 69, CEODS 2019-00027 is postponed one month. Item 70, CEPOM 2019-00003 is complied. Item 75, CEPFY 2019-00081 is off calendar. Item 78, RCCOR 2018-00019 is postponed one month. Item 96, <coughs> CEGMP 2018-00195 is complied. Item 98, CEPFY 2018-00692 is complied. Item 108, MHVIO 2018-01217 is postponed one month. <coughs> Item 111, MHVIO 2018-01086 is postponed to June. Item 114, CEFOB 2018-00003 is complied. Item 115, CEEXP 2019-00057 is postponed three months. Item 127, CEGMP 2019-00045 is postponed two months. And those are all the additions and deletions to the agenda. Good morning, Shayla Vasquez on behalf of the City Attorney's Office. Um, first, I'd like to call item number 49, CTOSV 20190001, Ulysses Cardelo Nunez. I'm dismissing this first. This is going to be dismissed per, per the City Attorney's Office. This case is going to be dismissed. Yes. Yes. Just okay. tell them ca case. Dis case. Yeah. See. Si. Yeah. The next case I'd like to call is item number thirty-six, CTBPR two zero one nine zero 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 two three, Carlos Alberto. Torre, and the code officer is Aaron Barber. Hello. Hello. Okay. There's a citation appeal, right? Yes, Judge. Mm -hmm. Would a property owner make their appearance for the record? Yes. Uh, what do I need to do? Make your appearance. Oh, my name is Carlos Torre. Your address? My address is 2107 Northeast 123rd Street. And your relationship to the property? I am a owner. Okay. And this is individual ownership, not a, not a corporate? Individual ownership. Right. And you are appealing the citation that you received? Is that still the case this morning? Yes, it is, sir. All right. City? Yes, Judge. Ms. Barber, can you please state your name for the record? And can you please tell us what your current job position is? Uh, code Compliance Officer, City of North Miami. And can you tell us about your background and experience? I have uh, about 22 years of code enforcement experience. Um, the majority of those years, sanitation code, and recently, uh, full code. Now, on February 6, 2019, um, did you give a violation to the property address of 2107 Northeast 123rd Street? Yes, I did. And what was the violation? The violation was for um, 
sited under building without a permit. It was for the uh, removal of um, some pipes that were out at the front of the property. Uh, there was an exterior courtyard wall and the pipes were removed. I'm approaching the homeowner. Ms. Barber, do you recognize those photos? Yes, I do. How do you recognize them? Uh, these are the photos that were taken um, during my initial inspection on February 5th and my, my second inspection on February uh, 6th. Were they taken by yourself? Yes, I took these photos. Are they a fair and accurate depiction of what the property looked like when you saw the violation on February 6th, 2019? Yes, yes they are. At this time, the city would like to introduce fo those photographs into evidence. Any objections? No. So admit it. Is that concrete? Is that concrete on there? I'm sorry? Is that concrete? That is a fence. Okay. <coughs> so where the fence over there, in the front of the house, Okay. a concrete fence, it was falling. Okay. And the pipe that you were seeing. Yes, sir. The microphone, I'm sorry. The pipe that you are seeing in the front of the house was from a discontinued uh, gas line that was gone years ago. The pipe was corroded and was sitting there. It fell off when we were removing the fence. May I proceed? All, yes. all permits were pulled oh. Hold on. for Hold the on. front of the, of the uh, building as well. All right, go ahead. Now, Ms. Barber, did you see a um, permit posting at this property address? Yes, there was a permit posted um, at the front of the property for interior uh, work. May I approach your witness, Judge? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Subsequent to that, there were other permits pulled as well for the front. Ms. Barbara, do you recognize that photo? I do, yes. These are the photos take that I took um, on the 5th. Are they a fair and accurate depiction um, of the property and the permit that you saw on the property? Yes, they are. At this time, the city would like to introduce those two photographs into evidence. Any objections? No. All right. So admit it. And Your Honor, when you're done, I'd like to have the witness read what the permit actually states. Now, Ms. Barber, can you tell us what the permit is for? If you can read at that. Um. Yes. Uh, well, the description is interior, rem interior remodeling, including kitchen and bath, floor, and water heater. Now, is there anywhere on that permit that talks about any exterior work? No, not on, not on the, uh, the permit that was posted that day. Did you have an opportunity to speak ever to the property owner or anyone on the premises? Um, that on the day that the citation was issued and the day before, um, no. But shortly after, I did receive a call. Shortly after you received the call? After the citation was issued, yes. And, wh and who did you speak with? Um, I believe it's um, this, gen this gentleman, Mr. Delator. And what did your conversation entail? Uh, he was had a question about the citation and the um, the reason for the citation. And did you explain what it was? I did, yes. And what was his response? Um, I don't recall the exact conversation, but I do know that he did make mention uh, that he would be appealing the, the, uh, the citation. Okay. Now, did you ever see any other permit posting um, on February 6, 2019, other than that one that is into evidence? Mm, this is the only one, and this photo uh, was taken on February 5th. There was no other uh, permit posted um, the 5th or the 6th. I have no further questions for this witness. Any questions for the witness? Um, yes. I, well, I would like to make a statement. Go yes. ahead. Okay. The pipe, as I mentioned, that was sitting in the front was from a dead gas line, which was ro corroded, and it fell off as we were removing the, st the fence that was in the front. I was told that to remove a fence, we did not need to have a permit, which was in the front. Who told you that? This was my contractor. 
And as, uh, from what I understand, there is no permit for necessary to remove a fence, uh, unless I'm correct, uh, mistaken, Ms. Barber? I believe that is correct for the, right. for the fence, yes. Right. So as we were removing the fence, there was a dead pipe in the front, which was from years ago. And when we were removing the wall, it, it fell off. It wasn't that we were removing, doing any type of plumbing or anything of that nature. Secondly, when we continue to do the, the additional work that we were going to do in the front, all permits were pulled, all the work was done, everything's been signed off on and completed. So I didn't even know that the pipe, the, that the, what was there, was something that needed, that had an issue, because. Is the pipe the issue? Y yes, sir. And yes. the pipe was a dead, a dead pipe that was corroded from old gas that's not even in the house, never was in the house. Did we identify what the pipe belonged to? At the time of the inspection, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry? So at the time that the citation was issued, we didn't know what the pipe was for, it's just that it was no longer in the picture? Yes, sir. Okay. Any, anything further? No, it's all, I mean, we've done everything with permits and every, we've pulled every single one and everything's been signed off on. Rebuttal? J Yes, Judge. The issue is that on the date in question, on the date in question, there was no actual permit pulled for this pipe. Um, it, you, your Honor can clearly see. I don't know if Your Honor recalls, but I can pass up the photographs again. Um, the homeowner does state that there was nothing in these pipes, but we don't know what it's connected to, what it's near. You can clearly see that it was dug, dug up, and it was taken out of the way. Um, I mean, that's an excavation issue. That could have been a pipe connected to something else that, that could have leaked. And for those reasons are, are the reasons why um, homeowners need to get permits to ensure that, you know, this isn't going to be an issue. Um, whether he got that information from um, the contractor or not, at the end of the day, he still needed a permit to be able to have that dug up or removed. So okay. you're saying that as he, as he removed the fence that needed no permit, he finds a pipe, he identifies what the pipe belonged to. He he's can't identify what it belongs to because he's not skilled in that trade to be able to do that. Or the contract, oh. or the contract that says this pipe belongs to ga a gas line. If I may. Sometimes if you're winning, you, I was no, always no, told no. you just should oh. kind of. <laughs> yeah. um, so they identify the pipe. At that point, you're saying that procedurally at that point, they should have stopped and said, hey, city, we found, we took, a, we took up a fence and we found a pipe that, which we've identified to belong to a gas line. Do we need a permit? Judge, I can pass back up the photos. This fence is a very clear fence. This isn't a fence that was covering the pipe in question that there is no way that he could have known that that pipe was there. The permit was actually for interior work. He does need a permit to do under 5-32, any outside work. And just, this is in the code, a- the code, your, your witness just said that he didn't need a permit to remove a fence. Yeah, but that's not what is in question here. What's in question here is the actual pipe that was in front of the home, and I can pass the- So that's why, that's why I'm questioning, I said, so I, re I remove a fence that happened to have a pipe where it was. Now the pipe is, now I clearly see the pipe is there. I stop my work. I call the city and say, hey, there's a pipe sitting here. What am I supposed to do? Is, no, that, is that the proper process? No, the proper process is that you need a permit to be able to do anything with the removal of this pipe, and that was not done. There was no permit before, even if you ran think, into it. I don't think you're following me, counsel. I removed the fence. I don't need a permit for that. Correct. I see the pipe. Correct. What do I do now? You go get a permit in order to remove that pipe. You cannot just remove a pipe because it can be connected to many other things. Okay. And I have the um, building official who would like to say something if your honor is inclined to hear. Sure. One second. I'm always so inclined. <laughs> Steve Pizzol, building official for the city of North Miami. Uh, there is a requirement when you're going to be doing any type of demolition type work like this that you no dig is called to identify any and all utilities or piping that is underneath. And yes, there is a requirement that if you have, if you come across the pipe, even if you're going to abandon it, permit does need to be pulled because we need to make sure that it, ta it goes back to its source and is capped properly, just in case somebody along the way decides to energize a line or turn a gas main back on, and all of a sudden now you have gas pouring from a void in a pipe. And a contractor who typically does work in North Miami, in the city of North Miami, would notice, right? 
contractor doing any work in the state of Florida should know that. Okay. Um, but we could agree that removal of a fence isn't demolition. As long as the fence is not protecting something else, yes, that can be removed without a permit. Okay. All right. So you remove your fence. Right. You see an exposed pipe. Your contractor should have known that the process was stop, call the city before taking any further action. Therefore, mm -hmm. having heard the testimony that was presented, uphold the citation issue. Can I make one statement first? And that was that the pipe was corroded and it fell off as we were moving it? I mean, that's your testimony, but. Hmm? And Judge, it, I'll just say this. For, for future reference, it doesn't matter the condition of the pipe at the end of the day. It's a whole process that's actually in well, the statutes regarding digging and pipes because mm -hmm. it can be connected to anything. What, he, what he's saying is that he didn't, what he's saying is he didn't do it intentionally. He said the Correct, pipe was dead, kind of just kind of fell off after being kind of handled. It kind of just fell off. But for future reference, anything regarding a pipe, it can be extremely dangerous if it's tied, intertwined with anything underground. Understand. A permit needs to be pulled. Understand. I understand. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Okay. So. All right. What is it? The ticket is upheld. So I got to pay the fine? It was a proper ticket, yes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is item 118, the White House condo. Aaron Barber is the officer. And the case number is SDNOV 2018-00406, item 118 on the calendar. property owner here right. okay in abstention huh All right. the property this is another um who, huh? oh this is a regular code case oh okay go ahead let the record reflect that the property owner is not present Go ahead and give your testimony. Yes, uh, good morning, Aaron Barber, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Um, this property has been cited um, since 2016, has been cited 71 times for garbage accumulation issues. Um, 16 of those citations were paid. And the last time I was out at the property, uh, the garbage was still piled up. Um, and when was that? That was, I should have these photos. Bear with me. I have photos here from April 10th, 2019 at 8.08 a.m. Um, in addition to garbage being piled up at the dumpster area and the trash chute rooms, there is a, uh, the tr one of the trash chute cylinders from the third floor was removed and leaving a gaping hole. I do have photos. Okay. If you would like to. And what's the date in which the notice to appear was was delivered or posted? The notice to appear was posted on, there was one mailed on the uh, March 27th. Order to comply was posted as well. All right. Having heard the testimony, the evidence presented the property owner failing to appear after having had proper notice. Find that a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of Mm -hmm. Oh, let the fines go forward. Yes, sir. And if we could, we'd like to request the uh, the maximum fines. I already issued the yes. fine. I already issued the fine amount. On will we retro these back to the abatement date, or, mm -hmm. or do the fines start today? Back to the abatement date. Okay. Back Thank to the you. date ordered to be abated. So that's 410, right? Correct. Thank you. The next item is item 99 through 103. Nomi Condominium. John Dorville is the officer. The case numbers are MHVIO 2019 0007071 72 73 and 74. Mm -hmm. Items 99 through 103. You guys didn't uh, guys didn't copyright that in time, huh? <coughs> so they 
ain't copyright ain't copyright that know me in time, huh? Everybody gets to use know me now. Know me. Make your appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Daniel Lopez as the attorney for Nomi Condo Association. All right. Has your client been made aware of the violation? Yes, they have, Your Honor. Any objections to this violation? Yes, Your Honor. All right, City. Good morning, John Dorval, City North Miami Co Compliance Office. This case is in reference to Nomi Condominiums. There are actually cases involving a one unit, and the rest are, are referencing the main. Just want to make sure we're all on the same page, correct? One unit and then a common area? One unit, and so there's MHVIO 2019-00068 is for unit 308. All the following are MHVIOs. It's the last two digits are 70, 71, 72, 73, and 74. So these, so these are all common area Sorry? These are all common area issues with the last okay. one being for a particular unit. That Correct. Well, I've, been, I've just been notified that 68 is not on the docket, so it's 70 through 74. Right. Yes? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, they were cited originally on March the 23rd. 70, please repair the elevator, not oh, hold working. On, hold on, counsel. Are you saying that these violations don't exist? Or, ha or did not exist at the time that they were cited? So are just I, I, I have to give a little bit of an explanation to, to, to be able to answer that question. Yeah, I'm an attorney too, I know. <laughs> so this is a condo association, okay? Mm -hmm. It's about a block and a half away from here. There's two buildings. There's a principal building that encompasses 33 units, and there's a back building which has three units, which is the reason that there's all these violations that exist which is not part of the association, okay? Um, there so that you're saying that the, that back building, that, as you call it, is not part of the Declaration of Condominiums? It's not described in the Declaration of Condominiums? That's correct, and I have exhibits that, that I'll present to your honor um, with a plan of termination of what's called back house units one, two, and three from the Declaration of Condominium of Nomi, a condominium so who owns which was recorded in 2015. So who owns those? So those units are privately owned outside of the association? Correct, by an owner who resides in Australia who the Board of Directors has been in contact with and has no interest in fixing the violations because the, the property is underwater and, and they don't care about it. And the problem here is the association has no jurisdiction to fix the property because it's not their property. It would be a trespass. Is there a separate po is there a separate folio number? There are three separate folios for the back uh, house. The reason that there's a confusion here that code enforcement is uh, assessing this to the association as a whole mm -hmm. is because if you go to the property appraiser and you click on the main folio of the reference for Nomi Condominium, the back house still encompasses, and I have a picture. Uh, if, if I can present this to, to your honor, the I'm exhibits. I'm very your honor, just, just as a point of reference, yeah. he's actually only referring to one of the violations the additional ones. He's referring to, and I'll give you that specific one right now. Okay. The order, the elevator, let's, let's, let's backtrack here. The elevator yeah. has nothing to do with the outs, with the back building, gotcha. correct? That's, That's correct. 70, That's 71. 70. I agree with the that. The metal fencing has nothing to do with the back property. Okay. 72, uh -huh. broken and missing mailbox boxes have nothing to do with the outside building. Okay. Okay, so the only property reference he's talking about is repair and broken glass and windows in the secondary building identified in MHVIO 2019-0073. That's the only issue he's discussing. And what about 74? 74, also trash and debris on the property. Is the association. It's all encompassing because there's trash and debris on that property everywhere. All right. So then we can agree that 73. Yes, sir. Has the wrong uh, property owner. I don't know if that's wrong. I'm, I'm, I would have to look back and make reference to the property when I did look at it. It was on the same folio. If I have some other information, we can table that one and go and address the others if you'd like. Well, council has a copy of the, the you have that stuff. Well, yeah, I, I have a copy of everything. I have a copy of the termination. I can, I can show it to him and then I guess he could present it to you. Go through it. Uh, I'm sending it to you. And if you want, uh, I, I can go ahead and I can walk you through it. Um, exhibit one, 
is the plan of, termin of partial termination of the back house units one, two, and three. It's a 13 page document. Uh, the second exhibit is uh, an exhibit showing, basically if you were to go to the property appraiser website and you see the folio, the reference folio, you'd see that the back house is part of that yellow line. Um, then I have, for a clearer picture, uh, I have the Google aerial view so that you can clearly see there's their distinct buildings. Then I have the summary printout of the property appraiser showing the reference only for Nomi Condo, which again is where that yellow L-shaped -sha box that encompasses both buildings is. And then the last three exhibits I have are the three separate folios for the uh, back building um, with all distinct folio numbers. Now. I understand uh, what, 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 what the code enforcement officer is saying in terms of um, that not all the violations are those properties that we're here part for. Of, are those properties part of the condominium association? Th that's what he's saying. That they're, 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 not. they're not. They're not. They're not. They're, not li they're listed separately. Correct. Th okay. Th so there's a recorded we're document. We're not going to that point. To we'll go ahead and concede that that number is incorrect. That if, we, if we could just address the, okay. Plan of partial termination of the back house units one, two, and three. So I'd like a moment to actually. Gotta be such an attorney. I I, I, I can explain what the partial termination is. I what, can what, as what, well, but I'd like to read it. For uh, myself. Absolutely, okay. but ju just just for ease of reference and, and for open record, the partial termination is meaning that those three units are terminated from the declaration, but that the rest of the thirty three units remain subject to the declaration. Kinda so it's a partial termination of condominium. Kind of figure with that for that now. Um, but so. Based on what my clients told me before today's hearing, there's over essentially over $190,000 in fines against this distressed property. The back um, lot or the, or the associate? My understanding is that the majority of those fines are assessed because of the condition, the deteriorating condition of this back lot. Um, with reference to violations let, let, that the let officer me just, has let mentioned. Me see the photos, let me see the photos that clearly, that clearly delineate this property from the other. Uh, properties oh okay well so, so so in reference to the other violations such as the elevator violation the mailbox violation um, those violations have been cured the elevator I if the officer how, would how go to the property he'd see that the elevators in working condition in fact Counselor, uh, I'm, I'm yes. looking at exhibit three yes and if we're talking about this this uh, this little building that has like three cars or four cars uh -huh. parked in front of it yes exactly you're saying that that little building is its own separate thing. Is the cause of all thing. the issues involving the, the larger parcel? Yes, Your Honor, because that is incorrect. A, 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 apparently what what I've been told um, by the board members who are behind me, I, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce them, um, but, but these are the board members from, from, from the condominium. They have explained to me that apparently since this property is in a dilapidated condition and is not secured, um, homeless people and other vagrants have gone there, they put trash everywhere, they'll sleep there, and they've made tons of efforts to get in contact with this lady in Australia. They, they're able to contact her through WhatsApp, but again, she's been completely unwilling to comply. And with regards to the violations that the, uh, the officer has brought, with reference to the elevator, we have a video just before um, the board members got here, they, they went over to the property, they, they had fixed the elevator, and the elevator d is in working condition. Does it have a certificate? Does it have an up-to-date certificate? certificate? It's in the process of issuing the certificate. But th th it's been fixed, and I guess th there, there's some sort of process involved there. You but need, You need an up-to-date certificate. And, and then with reference to the mailboxes, all the mailboxes have been repaired with the exception of one. And the reason it has not been repaired is because they've contacted the company that constructed the mailboxes, and apparently they don't make the, do the door slots um, in that size anymore. So they're trying to find an alternate way of getting that repaired um, through another company. They're trying, ba basically these owners um, well, behind me, they, 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 we're they not, own. We're not, we're not talking about one mailbox. You, could, you can understand how I would not really be concerned about one mailbox slot. No, no, I, I, absolutely. But, but the point I wanna make clear to, to the court that, that, that I haven't made clear yet so these owners behind me, um, they own 10 units right now. They're under contract to purchase 19 units. How many units in There's total? There's 33, okay? After that, 
th there's going to be about four units which have are behind on their special assessment that I'm going to be foreclosing on. They want to do, do you know, improve building, the condition you, of the property. You understand as a building, as a build, as an association, when investors own the majority of the units of an association that's governed by a board that's supposed to take care of the up they, uh, the maintenance of the building, the issue that presents, right? No, absolutely. But but and the so issue... Your clients, your clients the understand that owning the majority of the units in the building, the issue that presents in its governance and the maintenance of the building, right? And the responsibility that they then incur as it relates to that. No, absolutely, which is why they're here today. They understand the importance of these proceedings. They understand the importance of bringing the building completely up to code. They've passed special assessments to fix the elevator. They've passed special assessments to fix for which, the mailbox. For which most of them is going to be on, the, on them since they own. Well, like they, 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 they own 10 of them. There's still 23 other owners. Okay. And, and the problem is that because of these high fines of the $200,000, right now they were supposed to close on these other 19 units this week, but now it looks like that's not going to work because of the high fines are, aren't, aren't permitting clear title to pass. Are, are you meaning the fines that we're talking about for these particular cases or the fines that have accumulated previously? That's the part that, that, that I'm a little bit confused about because I, I, I was brought into this recently. I was given the notice to appear today, but I, I wasn't sure where to find exactly how the fines are distinguished between the different violations. So, Mr. Dorville, what, what, what they're basically saying is that of the three, uh, one, two, three, of the four remaining fines, or the four remaining citations for this property, uh, they've complied. Is basically what they're saying. They're saying that they complied. That's why they. That's why they object because they com they said they complied. As of my abatement date, mm -hmm. right, the elevator was not working. Okay. I had conversations with people who at the property. I believe one of the gentlemen I spoke to. In reference, I handed my card. So the issues. Let's. What's so you we'll so you gave them a date by I which there's an abatement it, date. And I provide. They, yes, they, sir. They didn't do it. Correct. Upon your reinspection, it hasn't been done yet. Correct. You issued the citation. Correct. It comes. It comes before me. They're here. They're saying it's done. Well. And you wouldn't know that because you don't go back out after your abatement date and right. before the hearing date. So we probably have to do something. But that's what that. I mean by if we go by order by order, right? Mm -hmm. So the outs all. Out, all outside information is irrelevant in reference to these particular cases, correct? Right. So we're talking about number 70. Is the elevator currently working? Yes, it is. Okay, can we, can we, have, an, uh, can we have a postponement on that particular case in order to verify that? Sure. Thank you. You understand that once you cite them for an operable elevator, it also includes them having an updated certificate. Yes, sir, clearly. Right. Yes, sir. So, so, that, so I just want to make sure that they are aware that it's not operable until they have the certificate in hand, correct? Uh, so absolutely, and, 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 and like they told me, it's in the process. So in the process is actually not, so I actually want uh, an adjudication on that case and said, I want adjudication and then I give them, um, and then I'll do my review, upon my review, I'll close the case if it's closed, but I would like an adjudication because currently it is not inoperable. It, it's, it's my understanding that the reason that cities enforce these types of violations is to get compliance. I have here a board of directors that wants to comply. This is, like I said, a distressed property, a low-income property just so you understand how without unlimited you, funds. Just so you understand how, how, how he's asking for an adjudication, what that means. That means that I, I, he wants me to find that a violation did exist at the time that he issued the citation, and then I give an abatement date. So, so long as you apply by my abatement date, then there's no penalty. Okay. What I, I, I guess what, what I would want to ask, um, and I don't know if this is the proper proceeding to do so, but what I would like to ask is that the, viol the fines be postponed or removed and given us, give the association, let's say, 60 days to correct every single violation that exists on their property. Obviously, in terms that's of the back property, that's we, how that works. we can't trespass. That's, a, that's how this works. Okay. There's no fine unless there's no compliance by my abatement date. Okay, and then... So I can give the, you time. The only issue that that presents is, uh -huh. like I told you, they, they, these particular gentlemen are under contract to buy 19 of these units, which now, because of the high fines of, I believe, excess of $200,000, this is now going to fall through, it appears. And, well, and, and, and obviously, if they become the majority owners, then they're in a better position to repair everything in the building and get it up to the city standards and, and probably above the city standards. So 
typically the way my hearings work are like this. You acknowledge that the violations existed when the citation was given. I ask you, great, how much time you need? You tell me how much time you need. I find that the violation existed. I give you the time you need. You abate by that time, and everyone's happy. Okay. There's no, there's no fines attached. Okay, so I mean, then I, I would say in reference to any violation related to that back building, obviously we cannot agree to those violations with respect to you're the saying association. You're saying that they're not part of the association, so. Yeah, exactly. They're not part of the association, so 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 those would need to be removed. But with regards to the other ones, I think I, I can ask my clients. The elevator violation existed. Okay. The mailbox violation existed. Yeah. And, and what, what, what was the other violation, offense? We can the agree that all the violations existed, as, <coughs> as that's what the evidence has been. How much time you need? ¿Cuánto tiempo para arreglar todas las violaciones que están en el edificio principal? Nosotros pusimos el hecho de la firma y no lo han pagado todas las unidades. Pero creemos que el dinero que tenemos, tenemos un plazo de cuatro meses para poder reparar todo lo que existe. Okay, so they're asking the for, for, ask for me, the more the more time you ask me for up front, the less likely I am to give any additional time on the back end. Que 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 si piden más tiempo ahora, quizás si hace falta más tiempo después, quizás el tiempo máximo que sea permitido y nosotros nos comprometemos a reparar todas las They 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 want to be realistic. They 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 want to do a deadline that they believe they can comply with. They they've passed a special assessment. There are several unit owners. Um, that have not paid the special assessment, which makes it, which ties their hands to, to fixing these violations. Now, they have asked for 120 days to, to, to cure the violations. Any objection? Yes, this is currently an occupied property, so has residents inside. Well, well, in terms of the elevator, he's right. That's health and safety. I can't give you 120 days to correct the health and safety issue. The other ones I can give you 120 days for, but not the elevator. And the, and the elevator needs to be, and the elevator needs to be made so that no one uses it until there's a certificate. Also, the mailbox issue, because obviously someone who has that mailbox can't receive or has unprotected mail. Okay, so so. Uh, they, they, they would say maybe 60 days for the elevator. It just depends. The, the elevator's in working condition. It just depends on how long it takes the inspector to get out there and, and do the certificate. All right, I'm going to give you 30 days on the elevator. And if it's not done within that particular time, then I'll see you back on uh, May 15th. May 15th. So I find out a violation as to all cases except for case number MHVIO 2019-00070. The ring. Yes. All other all other cases I find that a violation did exist as cited. Uh, for MH MH MHVIO 2019-00070, I give an abatement date of May 8th. If not abated by May 8th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Uh, and all other violations, I'm gonna give a July 10th abatement date. And if not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day per citation until abated. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So then, um, just so that I can be familiar with the process, so so the next step would be we would receive another notice of hearing for that for those dates um, to come here and show the progress on, on the violations, and then at that point, Your I'll Honor would decide if there's a fine. Right. Okay. So the Thank next you. next step is a notice to comply, correct? Correct. Yes. Notice to comply first, then you're going to get a notice to appear on the compli on the actual compliance issue. Okay, okay. And, and and is this something where well, one, once the, it's corrected, the, we should from the practical contact them to come from the practical back? standpoint? You leave here today to go fix the violation. Oh I, no, and, absolutely. And, and you have until those dates to fix those violations. When that when that date hits on each violation, he's going to come back out and inspect. If he finds when he goes out to inspect on those dates that the violations t still exist, he's going to issue a non-compliance. And then I'll see you again. Okay, perfect. Correct. Right. Thank you. One second. Oh. Yes. We also, we just also on 73, we're going to, I actually want to close out that case because I'm going to re reissue it for the, for the individuals, okay. to, for the proper service. So a case MHVIO 2019-0073, that case is hereby dismissed.
Yes. Thank and you. with with if there are any other related cases related to that back building from violations in the past, would those similarly be dismissed? Any fines related to that? No, because they're, you're untimely now. Those things have already passed. Those things have been assessed. They've been they've been assessed, and so now you have to take whatever administrative process that there is to deal with those fines. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next item is item 121 on the agenda, Trinity Church. Karen Jean Lewis is the officer, and the case number is CEGMP 2018-00264, item 121. Your Honor, Dean D. Bartolomeo, attorney for Trinity Church, 8400 Bird Road, Miami, Florida. I'm appearing on behalf of the church. Good morning. I've spoken to uh, the code enforcement officer there's a request to simply postpone this for a postponement for 30 days. Uh, what's the basis of the request? Pardon me? What's the basis of the request? The basis of the request is, is that, uh, number one, my client couldn't be here today, the, the specific individual that I needed. That's basically That's the, it? the request. Yes, sir. Any objection? Good morning, Co Compliance Officer Karen Jean Lewis. Counsel, you can, sp you can speak on behalf of the city. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but I want to consult with her first. Oh, okay. Good morning, Code Compliance Officer Karen Jean Lewis. This morning I checked the system in reference to Trinity Church. They did pull the paint permit, and I spoke to Mr. I don't want to. D. Bartolomeo. I spoke to him this morning, and they're actually on site scraping the building. So within another two, three weeks, they should be done painting. So I agree with the 30 day continuance. So granted. Thank you, Your Honor. The next item on the agenda is item 41 through 44. Deutsche Bank National Trust, property 1977 Northeast 119th Road. Vanessa Willis is the officer. Case number CEGMP 2018-00308, CEMHO 2018-00004, CEPOM 2018-00023, and MHVIO 2018-01259, and Gary Beswick is the officer for that case. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. David Ehrlich, blank room for the for Deutsche Bank, the recent uh, title holder. Okay. Your client's been made aware of the violations, correct? Uh, we dispute notice. Um, we I just found out about this hearing an hour ago. I understand that there was some service on Deutsche Bank to an address I don't recognize. You know what's good. You know what's considered good service for mini for municipality hearings, right? Uh, I know it's a very, not not exactly the highest standard. Uh, as long as they posted it. As as I understand. It. There there are some issues. They may take extra measures just because that's what they want to do, but as far as long as they posted it, it's good notice. I understand, uh, Magistrate. The w one thing I'd like to say is that there, this has a tortured history with this property in terms of the Deutsche Bank's access to it. Uh, there have been years upon years of, of uh, delay and antics and other things going on that have prevented our access. Just last week did we, were we finally able to uh, receive a writ of possession, uh, which we intend on executing any second. Um, but this has been a, uh, a long process to get here with multiple bankruptcies, multiple appeals, multiple stays uh, of everyone uh, you can imagine that's ever breathed on the property mm -hmm. filed for bankruptcy in this case. So we're, we're only first getting access. To the, we, don't even, we still don't have access to the property. Uh, despite having title for you know going on a year, uh, every time we move for writ of possession, there was another bankruptcy. Uh, so we're confident that it is moving forward. Um, but candidly, uh, I understand that the notice is bankruptcies were stopping a writ of possession. Yes. What was the jurisdiction? Possessory interest is a, uh, a, a, a coincidentally. It's funny you say that because I've researched that myself. A, a uh, possessory interest in a in rem property yeah. is the property of a yeah. bankruptcy estate. Right. And so that triggers an automatic stay under the federal statute. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing our best. We just got rid of possession last week. So now there's no I impediment to access other than physical 
Access. ability to do it. So yes. I go back to my initial question sure. as it relates to objecting to these violations. You're not saying that the violations didn't exist. You're just saying that we need more time. That's exactly right. That's okay. exactly because we don't we haven't even had a chance to survey the damage. Uh, we don't we don't we don't know what's going on. There's still uh, folks in the property that uh, we need to figure out how to deal with that. So how much time? I, I, w I would ask for at least 120 days. Uh, I saw that you just granted until July in one instance. This, this I believe, merits that, just given the tortured history. If I could show you the, the docket of the foreclosure case, you would fall over. Um, I'm, ver I'm very versed in those, <laughs> those things. I, um, I know how they can get. So, and, uh, you know, because we don't even have access yet, I'm asking, I would ask for that. Any objections? What did he ask for, Judge? 120 days. No. Yes. Huh? Yes, there is an objection. Okay. We think 60 to, oh, sorry, it's on? 60 to 90 days is more appropriate. We're not okay with 120 days. It's been continued too many times. All right. I haven't heard the testimony of the Find out a violation does exist to cite it. Issue an abatement date of June 12th. Not abated by June 12th, then it's $250 per day per citation until, uh, until abated. And of course, there's, if there's an issue, you're going to get a non compliance. You'll come back before me and you'll tell me what that issue is and how much additional time you may need. I understand, Magistrate. She just said 90 would be amenable and okay. you just ordered 60. Is, can we do the J July would be, would be 90? Yeah, okay. Special Go. Magistrate, please. Um, Vanessa Willis, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. I'm just asking there's a pool on the property. Oh. There are residents that live on both sides of this property. We need to really try to get that pool situated I'm sorry. Um, I guess I should have let you talk immediately. Though. Yeah, that had an abatement date of 213 fines at $250 per day, so that one is separate from But that should have been already. But but that's not what That's, that's not 00023. Right. Um can we do 30 but, for but one? But you don't and cite it. You don't cite it as a safety issue. You cite it as a a basically a uh, um a nuisance issue like it's unsightly. I believe it is as a nuisance report. It said, unmaintained pool. They needed to clean the dirty pool. Water must be clear, allowing full visibility to avoid mosquito, frog, and vermin infestation. That doesn't seem to be a safety issue rather than it is an appearance issue. The code says it shall be unlawful to have keep or maintain, cause or permit a swimming pool which does not meet the water clarity standard, which allows clear visibility from the water surface to the pool bottom, or maintain such swimming pool in such a manner as to create a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And so clearly they are in violation. They do not have. And 12-22 is the portion of the nuisance code. What I'm Special saying magistrate. Is that, what I'm saying is that you're objecting for about the additional time because your argument sounded like you were arguing a safety issue because it's, it's a swimming pool, but it's more of a nuisance issue than it is a safety issue. And so July 10th, mm. on all citations. Judge, I'm gonna object to that 00023 for the Ju July 10th date. You're objecting? Okay. For the record. It's already, it should have been abated by 213. And we reiterate that this is the first we're, we're at the table trying to help, and it's the first time that we actually have the ability to do anything. So I understand that there was a notice at the property. There have been people that have tried to remediate the, any issues of property preservation with the property. They've been threatened uh, with physical force by the current occupants. There, there have been all kinds of allegations of uh, salacious behavior, and I, I'm just saying this is our first opportunity to even try to rem remedy the situation. And the city's objection is duly noted but overruled and maintained that the abatement dates for our citations is July 10th. Okay. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day per citation until abated. Your Special Honor. Magistrate, may I just put this onto the record, just for the record. Um, as far as Miami-Dade property appraisers, we have the owner as um, Deutsche Bank National Trust. The mailing address is 5720 Premier Park Drive, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. I have the certified mail receipt label, yes, return receipt, that was um, delivered to an individual at the address at 3.59 p.m. on April 8th. 
so proper service was given. In addition to that, I've been in correspondence. I have emails back and forth. This morning, um, Mr. Hurtis, he stated that he um, had a funeral. He said he just became aware of the violation. However, prior to that, there was a young lady, uh, Gina, who appeared here at the magistrate court, said that she would make all contact with She's a portion of Deutsche Bank as well. So she said that she would make contact with them, let them know what was going on with the property, and someone would be here or be in contact with the city, and no one has responded. They also are um, registered with ProChamp support. I have emails back and forth with ProChamps letting them know that all of these violations exist on the property. So you I just- understand the unique position in which the property owner is in if i send somebody out to my property that i now have legal title to and the person who's who's dispossessing me of the property tells that person if you don't get out of here you might you might suffer some bodily injury and that person says i think i'm a pass then and, and keep it moving you would understand that can you call the police Just call the police on, on on the person who's dispossessing my Assault. property, which is a civil action, which, which is what they're gonna be told when they get there. Uh, this is a civil action, you're gonna have to take that up in court, which they're doing. But it's a criminal assault, it's a threat. Yeah. That's not what happened. I understand what's happening. My ruling, my ruling Judge, still. In regards, to, before your honor goes on, in regards to um, yeah, yeah. item number 43, because it's already been abated, are you asking to table it? Because if so, then the date is July 17th. Number 43. Yeah, zero, 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 already zero, adjudicated. You're saying it's already, it had already yes, been adjudicated? you already adjudicated oh. it, and the abatement date was 213. That's what I've been telling oh. your honor. Oh, are yeah. we letting the fines run, or are we tabling oh. it? No, we're going to table it then. If we're going to table it, then the date needs to be July 17th, not July 10th. Correct. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. Can we enter an appearance so that we get noticed? And I, just briefly, the person, Gina, who you referenced, happened to be in this hearing office. She is affiliated with a law firm that regularly represents our client, but does not in this specific case. So she was just trying to do us a solid. Uh -huh. She and said so it on the record. She okay, did. I got it. I just, I just want to be clear <laughs> that any notice on her isn't necessarily notice on us. And I do appreciate the fact that it was sent to the Deutsche Bank uh, address on the certificate of title. That address is atypical, and that so it was news to me okay. uh, when the gentleman just showed me that. So I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is item 48. Elitus August Edme St. Louis is the officer. The case number is CEBPR 2019-00006, item 48. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Yeah, my name is Elidis Auguste, 1515 North East 136th Street. Okay. Uh, does it apply here? Mm -hmm. Darn it. Um, You've been made aware of the violation of needing to obtain an after the fact permit for the work that you were doing at your property? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, um, so you, you acknowledge that you didn't have a permit when the work was being done, right? Yeah, just because I didn't know. Okay, how much time do you need to get the permit? I'm gonna go tomorrow and issue it. So 30 days? Yeah, it'll be okay. All right, find out the violation doesn't exist as cited. Issued abatement date of May 8th. If not abated by May 8th, then it's $250 per day until abated. All right, thank uh. you. 
right. The next case on the agenda is item 104. Abdulio Acosta, Edme St. Louis is the officer in the case number CEWWC 2019-00011, item 104. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, my name is Abdul Acosta, uh, 1390 East 137th Street, and okay. my wife Lorena Acosta. So it appears that you have a roof in disrepair, correct? Uh, that's correct, sir. All right, and so you, so you understand why the city issued the yes. violation? Yes, yes, I, right. I know her, yes. Uh, so how much additional time do you need? Oh, we are fighting with insurance because insurance is uh, part of this uh, issue. We had a letter from our attorney when I present to her. Just so you understand that the city is not obligated to wait for you to resolve your issue with regards to your insurance claim in order to yes. to move forward. Uh, yes, sir. So what? Uh, but I mean, uh, you know, the insurance, I mean, are really tough not to file. I mean, it's, uh, I would like to repair the roof, but I mean, if I repair it, I mean, they're going to pay me. That's the issue that I have. I mean, the dilemma that I'm trying to fight with them. I mean, listen, I'm a property owner, I, I get it. But again, the city doesn't have to wait for you to resolve your claim with your insurance company. As a, as a property owner, you're responsible to maintain your property re regardless of insurance. Uh, that is correct, sir. I mean, I, I'm agree with that. But I mean. So how, how long has this been so far? Good morning, City of North Miami Court Officer in St. Louis. Um, this violation was initially opened back in on February 11, 2019. Oh, so fairly new. Yes. Okay. So I've been working with the property owner and giving them time as well. Okay. So what's your recommendation in terms of time? How much time do you think you'll need to work to try to resolve the matter? See have you gone to mediation yet? Uh, the lawyer is working on it. I mean, has he he's filed a lawsuit? Uh, yes. Has it gone to mediation? You know what uh, mediation is? Uh, when they go to a mediation, but uh, they haven't told me. I mean, uh, what part of the mediation they are? Okay. All right. So it's a lawsuit. Go on for, and they're saying without the money from the insurance company. They can't repair what you cited them for. How can we go about that as far as timing with them? How much time do you recommend, Council? Judge, just, just in other cases, it needs to be needs to be fixed we can't just wait on the insurance forever these are things that take six months a year a really long time just like when there's someone who needs you know a new roof it needs to be repaired at the end of the day it's in violation I agree I agree so it's a great assessment now I the dilemma is how much time am I gonna give them um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you until July 10th all right. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day. All right. And if it's not, if you don't have it done by July 10th, then you'll be back in front of me on July 17th. And then we'll determine where you're at at that point. All right. It's a little short, I mean, short time. I mean, July the 10th, I mean, it's, I know. I mean, it's like, I mean, two months. Yeah, we'll see where we are. Mm. So from there, I mean, we can proceed, I mean, where you're at according to what I have with the lawyer. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Huh? We need counsel. Oh, okay. 81 through 90. Judge, <coughs> yes. wait a minute. This is all about a, f a file, a file. Yeah. 